I don't know about the county, but I know there's homelessness in many, many cities. I lived in Toronto quite a few years, and it's pathetic what you see in Toronto. It's a possibility. I think it's more so in the big cities, but yeah, it's a possibility that there's some in the county. I don't think there is. Not that I've seen. I've lived here my whole life, so. It might be out there somewhere, but uh, you know, I've been in I've been uh, in Harrow all my life, and I've never actually seen anyone that's homeless, like living in a tent or a cardboard box or something like that. I don't think I've ever seen homelessness in the county. I haven't seen it, so I wouldn't know. But um, Windsor, definitely. I'm sure there is, but it's not like you see it in the city where it's such a huge population where you'd see it more often. I don't, I don't know that it's hidden as much. It's just I think people are in the city more. It's more prevalent there. So we just see it more there. The hidden homeless. Are they in your town? Walking down your streets? Does this look like a place where homelessness exists? Are you looking hard enough? What would you do when you find yourself on the street with nothing? Absolutely nothing. Where would you go and, and how would you get there? Most would just turn to their parents, but yours, yours have just kicked you out. Will it ever get back to the life you once knew? The normal everyday life that the rest of the world seems to share? I mean, what's next? These are questions that members of your community ask themselves every single day. Homelessness is the inability to sustain a place to live. Anyone who's just uh, sitting outside, for, even if it's just for a night, like anyone who doesn't feel like they're at home, I mean, there's always a difference between a house and a home. It makes you grow up real fast. Like, you have to learn stuff real quick out of all your mistakes or other people's mistakes. Like, everything anybody does affects you. Well, I used to believe, just like everyone else, that um, homeless, homeless people were you know, the people living on the side of the road and, and people begging for money, people that, li or that sit in tattered clothing and everything, but um, I've, I've grown a lot mentally and I guess now I'd consider it just anyone who feels like they have no home. It's not so much where you live, it's what you think about where you live and how you feel. It, it's, a lot more emotional, mental than anything else, physical. And I think most of us understand that there is homelessness and, and poverty in the big city, but it's, it's less understood, less recognized, and less acknowledged uh, in the rural area. Since I have been here, um, I have uh, experienced uh, people that are, that are homeless, that have come in homeless, and we've been able to, to give them shelter and give them the, the, uh, the cosseting and the, and the nurturing that they need um, in order for them to, to basically stay alive. People don't realize that a lot of these people eat all garbage dumps. They wait for the pizza places. They wait for other places to throw out their garbage. And they'll go in there and eat. There's definitely homelessness in the county. Like, you may not see it, but it's definitely there. What I think we see more of are the kids who couch surf. Um, there aren't as many services that they can access in the county, um, given the, the size geographically, lack of transportation, uh, public transportation. And so as a result, they'll go from friend to friend um, or relative to relative and, and sleep on their couch as opposed to being able to locate someplace to stay on a more consistent basis. 
Windsor's got all kinds of support programs for that. Remington doesn't, Kingsville doesn't, Wheatley doesn't, Harrow doesn't. Like, how come all these bigger cities get support program, but little, little, little cities don't get it? Can you, anybody explain that to us? This is the city of Windsor, and these flags represent the areas where a homeless individual can access a service. Now, zoom out to Essex County, the rural area surrounding Windsor. For a space five times as large with the same population, the services just don't seem to add up. To illustrate the unique circumstances for homeless teens in the county, we found two subjects to participate in an experiment. One from the county and another from the city, each with the goal to find shelter for the night. All right, so Emma, today um, you've become homeless. Simon, you've just become homeless. Fun. Did you know that? Uh, yeah, now, now, now I, you do. Yeah. Have you ever experienced homelessness, Emma? I have not. I've never been yeah. homeless before. You now don't have a cell phone, so if you have that, you have to hand it over. Thank you. Do you uh, still have your cell phone? Yes, you do. Not anymore. Oh. <laughs> and all you do have is $20. So your goal for the day is to find shelter. Do you think it's going to be possible, or? I don't think it'll be easy, but. No? Do you know uh, where you think you're going to go first, or? I figured I'd head into town and find something there. So I just, I literally just have to find a way where? You have to find out where to go and what to do. Okay. So find a place. You know. <laughs> find a it's place. all me? Yeah. Find a place to sleep tonight. That's basically it, yeah. All oh, right. seriously? Mm-hmm. Ah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> it's, it's hard. I did like, yeah. What's I... your first step going to be, you think? I don't really know. I said, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I literally don't know where to go. We have professionals, politicians, and first-hand accounts telling us that homelessness is here. But where and, and what haven't we noticed? Everyone can recognize homelessness in the city. People curled up in streets, sleeping in the alleyways. So, so what does homelessness look like in a rural, small-town setting? I mean, it's not like, like, you know, like Toronto or anything, where they're like sitting all down down Young Street and stuff. But you know, there are people that are homeless. They just people choose to ignore it, or you know, they don't they don't think, oh, well, their little quaint little small town has any homeless people in it, but it does. There are a lot of things hidden behind closed doors that most people in small towns would never guess because they've all grown up with each other. So that makes it a lot harder. And to say, you know what, like I've been kicked out and I find a lot of kids in the county are unable to say that they are homeless because people will look down upon them and their family. Would you be afraid to tell anybody if you're living on the streets? I would be because then you're nothing. You're, you'd be like scum. That's what you'd be like. That's what I felt like when I was on the streets. A woman had asked us what we were doing outside and saw us with the cameras, and we said we were shooting a documentary on homelessness and awareness for it. And the lady was like shocked, like, really? Homelessness in Kingsville? No way. And we were like, yeah. It's everywhere, Leamington, Harrow, Amherstburg, Essex. It's not just in Toronto or Windsor, it's, everywhere. You know, they're living in a garage with no heat. They're living under somebody's deck because the house is at vacant for, you know, six, eight months a year. Or they're living in the ball diamond dugouts or down at Seacliff Beach. And 
I never would have believed it until, you know, I sit down and talk to these people and it is here. It's homelessness is in Leamington. And as much as people want to say, oh, not in my town, it's here. I think we have to look at the fact that in, in small urban and rural Ontario, uh, poverty and, and to some extent homelessness is kind of a hidden issue. Uh, unless it affects you directly, you may not see it. In other words, I think if you go, if you go down the street in, in any of the municipalities that I represent, uh, you won't see someone sleeping on the street at night. Uh, you won't see someone uh, asking for, for a, a financial handout like you will in the city. So you say, well, I guess then the, the there's, there is no poverty or homelessness, but it is there. There's definitely homelessness in the county. Like, you may not see it, but it's definitely there. Like, I, I never thought about it when I was younger, but you see it everywhere else and you think, oh, it's not, it's not around here. It can't be. There may be more young people who find themselves sleeping on somebody's couch, a friend's couch, as opposed to sleeping in the street. But that poverty, that homelessness is still a fact. So I, I think that's the largest difference between the two, is, is how do you recognize it? Uh, and, but it's still there. Realistically, people always end up hidden. It, it's the hidden homeless, right? Um, they end up on their friends' couches like, like, I, <laughs> like I do, and they end up on, in their ex-boyfriend's homes. Like, they find places, but these places, they're not homes, and they know that they can't be there temp or permanently. They know that it's temporary, and it's just very taxing. Perhaps the, the big challenge in the county, and, you know, and I'm a city-raised guy and I've been working in the city all my life, but uh, part of what I understand in the county is that it may not be as prevalent, may not be as obvious when you're driving around. You know, you may not see the obvious signs of homelessness, but uh, anybody to suggest that it doesn't exist, I think they're just fooling themselves and, and frankly turning a blind eye to it. to like the teen health center and ask them if there's anything that I could do? Or is that like not? Perhaps. Perhaps? Whatever you decide. Yeah, I'm not walking that far. 50 kilometers is just too much. I'm thinking uh, OPP would probably know something. Maybe they'll drive me down back to Windsor. Uh, until 12.30, okay. So, I just need to think of something else I could do till then. I don't know what time it is, though. <laughs> 11.30. Okay, thanks. Okay. So I'm gonna go into shoppers and I'm gonna ask them where or what the address is for the mission place for me to stay. That's my plan. That's what I'm going to do. I just went in there, and the uh, lady informed me that there are food banks in the area. So if I do get hungry later, I might be able to get some food. Um, there, aren't, there don't seem to be any shelters, which I didn't think there would be. So I think uh, it's going to be about finding a ride into Windsor and getting to the Salvation Army. I don't really want to walk. Clearly, there's a homeless population here in the county, and many of these individuals face the same circumstances of those in the city. So what are the contributing factors, and why are our neighbors living without the basic necessities for survival? I would say um, homelessness is, it, it, 
it varies. It's, it's due to joblessness. It's due, it's, it's due to alcoholism, drug addiction, um, mental illness. I think there are different age ages where um, it's an issue, but more so for those 16, 17 year olds. Children's aid is no longer mandated to provide any type of support. So really and truly at 16 until they're 18, they're caught between being a child and being considered an adult. Um, and as a result, they, they really struggle with some of those decisions that they have to make because they're making them without the supports that they really need. people do need government services but the thing that sucks is that you have to be 18 to fully get it because once you're young your parents lie and they'll say oh they can come back home but in reality you're the one being kicked out every other week. Homelessness in, in my view it doesn't always isn't always because of poverty uh, sometimes it, it, it's the it's a family situation where um, a, a young person may move out of the home for a variety of reasons. Most parents can't accept the fact that their children grow up and that transition with children, they have raw emotions at teenage years, they don't know how to cap it, and without guidance from their parents or conflict arises and then children usually leave home at that time. They're your primary caregivers. They're the people, your, your parents are the people who decide to have a child. And when they say that the child that they decide to have, that they always told that they love, can't stay there. I do feel a lot older than my age for the fact I've been raising myself since about six or younger for my mom was just into a lot of other stuff that caused her to sleep all day. So it was me making the food, me making sure I got to the bus stop. Oh no, I never talked to my family. I maybe called my mother once in a while just to see how she was doing. Never cared about my father, because he always beat my mother and beat us kids up. That's what led me to take off on the streets, because I got tired of beating up as a child. Um, I don't know. I never had family to my mom. I never talked to her until I was 28 years old, and then I lost my dad when I was 30. So I never really got to know him. My mom, I just started talking to her again. Like I said, I never had a mother or father in my life, or an aunt or an uncle or my grandparents. It was just me by myself. I was my mom, I was my dad. So I figured out that the mission is a church. So it was once a church and now it's, now it's the mission. So I still don't know the address, but now I know what it looks like, so. They said to turn right here and that it's a church. Maybe it's this way, because that looks like a church. And I don't see any churches up here. I just see the one, uh, the... Okay, I'm gonna go see if that's it. Yep, here it is. It's a long road ahead. With all of these obstacles and hardships that face our homeless population, could it be that the largest stumbling block are our own attitudinal barriers that society has put up? How does your community react to its homeless population? 
We ask that question to the people that face that social barrier every single day. People will definitely treat you different when you're homeless or like you're in a different situation than they are. Like, um, I know there's friends that I have that I don't tell them what's going on with my life because they treat me completely different. They don't want to know about it. They ignore me. They're in denial, straight out. I mean, that, that's what I would say to them because I see it every day. You know, the people we have to convince that this exists are, are those folks out there who aren't touched by it. And I, I think maybe that's the very basis no matter where you live. If it doesn't touch you personally, then you're less apt to be concerned about it and, and less apt to recognize it for that matter. Each of us lead busy lives and we've got lots of things to think about. And unless it touches our family or us personally or somebody you know, then it's more difficult to get people to recognize uh, that it exists. When they admit to something like that, it could be in their backyard. And then they would have to look at it. Okay? And they don't want to look at it because then it becomes, it also becomes a financial issue too. It becomes a financial issue. Now we're going to have to get more money to deal with this situation. Well, and then they say, well, if the person is really afflicted, well, if they want to get sober, they want to get clean, well, let them do it for themselves and we can wash our hands. Especially in the grocery stores, if like, you go shopping or anything and you think you can afford all this, you have like a certain amount you're fixed at, and then you're like three items over, you're like, okay, well I have to pick and choose what veggies I gotta put back or what meat I have to put back. And it's embarrassing, especially when there's like a huge lineup behind you, or even coupons. Like everybody hates people with coupons because they take forever, but they are like helpful a lot. I think for the peers it's varied. Um, obviously if if teens are able to couch surf, then there are individuals that they're close to who are willing to allow them to stay in their home, um, even if it's for a short period of time. I think for other students, not unlike many adults, they don't understand it. They don't understand how that circumstance could exist. Um, they don't understand how they can help. Um, and oftentimes when they're confused that way, what they tend to do is either shun that person or not try to help them because they really don't know what to do to be of assistance to the person who's struggling with that issue. When people find out I'm homeless, they treat me extremely differently. Um, I came to school one day in my pajamas because I had no other clothes. And everybody asked me, well, what's wrong? And I didn't really want to like announce it on like the PA system or something, but I'm not going to create a lie about it. So I told them and they gave me like, they sort of, treated me as if I was nothing to them, as if I was worthless, that it's my fault that I'm homeless. Like, they treated me sort of like I don't exist in the world and that nobody should, like, want to be around me anymore. I mean, I basically got kicked out of my house um, on the night of a party, I remember, actually. And I went to my friend's place and I started talking about it, and my one friend turned to me and said, look, either do something about it or forget about it and party with us. And I didn't even know how to respond. I didn't respond. It, your, your friends make the most difference out of almost anyone in your life, and the fact that some people have not been in a situation or, or are intolerable of a situation that much, that it hurts. I'm heading towards Amherstburg so I can take Howard to Windsor. Okay. Yeah. Right. Technically, I've only walked about this much. I still have to walk about that much. Could take a while. I hope you guys didn't have plans. Uh, listen, my name is uh, Dino Salvador, and I'm the uh, program coordinator here at the Downtown Mission. Yes, I mean, she, she has found shelter, 
but again, the ongoing question is like, is she going to be happy with just staying here? I mean, I'm sure she might be happy just staying here for, for a day or two, but I'm sure she'd probably want to find something else to be a little bit more self-sustaining, right? So I guess that's where we got to probably sit down with Emma and find out, you know, how best we could try to help her, uh, help her, assist her, uh, again, maybe trying to make some of those connections with other social agencies in the community to, to kind of help her. So in under two hours, you were able to find shelter in the city? Yes, I was. Okay, I can now give you your cell phone back. Okay. The keys to your house. All right. But it'll cost you $20. I didn't even have to didn't use it. Didn't even have to use no. it. No. What do you think we're going to find tomorrow when we uh, follow Simon around? I think it's going to be really difficult for him. I mean, I can't, I can't think of any place, especially with not being able to have your phone to call anyone. The county, it's like, you have to walk two blocks to the next home. I think it's going to be really difficult for him. Well, I am alone. I'm out here. It's just past noon. It's about as hot as it can get today. I have no water. Uh, I'm all alone again. I'm sweating like a pig. And I'm not really sure, uh, even if I get downtown, if I'm going to have a place to stay. There are so many stereotypes that follow our homeless. Words such as criminal, lazy, and deserving often follow them. But homelessness isn't always a choice. So are they really the subject of their own undoing? Or are there some pre-existing factors that contribute? If people cannot um, figure out what they want to do with themselves and they have a handicap that allows them, that disallows them to get jobs and disallows them to be punctual and disallows them some manageability in their lives. It becomes a problem and they become homeless. It's very, very hard. Um, I've been diagnosed and I still have arguments with myself as to whether or not there is anything wrong with me. You just kind of start to second guess yourself so much. I've got a mental disability and a lot of people in my family do and it's very difficult to, especially the different mental, mental disabilities we have, conflicting with each other just makes it a lot harder. For me, I was for long periods of time extremely depressed and I mean, when for four years, you think about suicide every day. It's pretty hard to believe that, that something's not wrong in your head. If, if they have mental illness, they will self-medicate due to the mental illness. Alcoholism, drug addiction, gambling, whatever type of addiction, is also a mental illness, okay? And there's also mental illnesses such as bipolar, chemical imbalance of the brain, manic depression. Okay, those are other types of mental illnesses. And what happens is, is that these uh, conditions have to be managed before the alcoholism or the drug addiction can be handled. I self-medicated for a very long period of time and on occasion I still do and it's it's hard but it can work to make you forget for even for a small period of time and sometimes that's all that's necessary so I mean it's not healthy but sometimes in a way I guess to a certain extent it is it's a very big thing among teenagers because a lot of us don't want to go and talk to someone who does this for a living and honestly doesn't actually care because they get hundreds of kids in a year saying the same thing. But no one takes the time to look harder than that causes us to go look for something that can make us happy. Basically, life becomes unbearable for them and they can't live in sustained reality. So they have to induce 
if you will, temporary psychosis, if you will, where the things are going to look differently for a little while by inducing alcohol and drugs into their system. And anything you become dependent on after a while will, will, will cause a problem. All right, we're here just outside of Windsor. Um, after about two and a half hours of uh, letting Simon walk out of Harrow towards Amherstburg into the hopeless abyss, uh, we decided as a documentary crew, a responsible uh, movie making team, that we should uh, stop him from doing what he was doing because one, it was unsafe because of the cars driving by, and two, it was really unsafe because of the heat outside. So we actually had to step in and shut down our own experiment because of the conditions. So here we are on the outskirts of Windsor, and uh, we're going to pick up where we left off because it was going to take him about another uh, five to six hours of walking. So uh, we're picking up where we left off, and uh, he has to find out where is shelter for the evening. So we're back at uh, square one here. So. so I have no idea where the shelter actually is. I'm assuming it's somewhere downtown Windsor. Uh, throw all my uh, the map and T-shirt and all that sweaty stuff, and now I'm going to head to a bus stop and take the bus down to uh, downtown and find the shelter. Definitely beats walking. I kind of wish I knew how much I walked today because it was a lot. Just kind of wish I had some air conditioning right now. Well, I, uh, if I had a bike, that would have been my first option, but that wasn't a possibility at the time, so walking was the uh, only option. Sorry, you don't know where the Salvation Army is, do you? Oh, okay, thanks. I guess it's right over there. So, nice and close. I think this journey might be done. When we set out to follow Emma and Simon, we wanted to investigate the obstacles for the individuals in the county. And for Simon, the largest roadblock has been transportation. Seeing as there's no shelters in or near small towns, he was forced to look to the nearest city to meet his goal. But Windsor is 30 kilometers away. How would you get there? I cannot fathom having to come from the county an hour away to a social service office because there's no longer satellites in the county area for people. So they try to centralize the system again to cut back money, right? So it, it must be a nightmare. I, I really empathize with them. They either bike or they walk. And you know, if they have money, they might take a taxi maybe halfway there or they might walk there and then walk halfway back and take the taxi on the way back. It's just, you gotta, in order to be out here, you need, you need money. And if you don't have money, you're, you're walking. Well, there's no doubt about it. In, in the rural area, transportation's a problem because you, uh, even if you have the money for it, you can't jump on a bus or jump on the subway like you can in the city. Like if I lost my job, I live on a dirt road in the middle of nowhere where school buses barely even go on. Um, how am I gonna get into town to even go to the food bank or go apply for a job. I don't have a vehicle, um, no buses, no transportation. A heck, a cab's like $20 out here. There is no way to get around in the county at all. I, I can't even think of a way that you can other than walking or riding a bike. And even then, it's scorching hot. Many of our families who are in the city can grab a bus um, and, and be there in a short period of time. Those in the county don't have access many times to transportation, have to pay someone else to bring them in, and as a result then don't access the support that they could at the time that they needed. 
frankly, and I think they're, they're recognizing this, the county government, Essex County Council, and the municipalities in the county are looking at transportation as being an issue. And uh, I think in the not too distant future, uh, we will have a service in the county that will provide uh, transportation, public transportation. We would love to see a uh, fully integrated community transit plan as soon as possible. There was a plan presented to Essex County Council in August of 2010 after a number of community input surveys and uh, meetings. I attended one of those meetings in Kingsville and told the consultants that there's a great need for transportation in the county for people to get to doctor's appointments, to get across communities, um, and was told that their original plan focuses on three lines from Amherstburg, Leamington, and Lake shore into Windsor focusing on the commuter market or citizens who already have transportation. Unfortunately to create a fully integrated cross community plan I was told it would be at least another five years from the implementation of their proposal and their proposal has now been deferred due to the upcoming election so we're unlikely to see a fully comprehensive integrated cross community transit until 2017 at the earliest. I was taking a rest, this lady comes up beside me in her car and she's like, are you okay? Because she was wondering if I got hurt or anything. And I didn't catch her name, I don't know. I didn't ask her, stupid of me, but uh, she gave me water and some gum, which I thought, I said, thank you, you know, did all the nice stuff. As she turns around, comes back probably about two minutes later, she hands me 20 bucks and two granola bars. And it just shows that you know, there are nice people out there, and you just gotta, you don't have to dig to find them, but they'll come to you. All right, so I just went in there, and um, they informed me that I can get a room for the night. Um, I'm just gonna fill out some paperwork with them, and uh, they'll get me set up with a room, some uh, food, and I'll be, uh, I think, uh, yeah, the, the journey is over. Definitely after my experience today, I would have to say it is not easy for somebody from the county to get the um, proper uh, shelter that they require. Uh, it's just, uh, there's no shelter out in the county. Let's see, I, I have $5 and 44 cents. So with uh, all that money left, uh, a lot being spent on water. I don't think uh, somebody would have been able to make the trip having walked, especially that walk was grueling. The map says it all. Emma found shelter close to her home in less than two hours, where Simon walked for six hours, plus another five if he'd continued his trek from Harrow. The results don't lie. Something must be done about the transportation for those in need. There are so many sad stories when it comes to poverty and homelessness. It can definitely seem hopeless. But we were introduced to an individual who rose above all obstacles and found a new start. So we traveled to London, Ontario to meet Ron Rafool. This isn't, a lot of people, this isn't their last stop. I've had a lot of people come to me, I've helped them out, they've gone out in the community again and did fine. This one guy, that I help, that's a singer, he's got a new baby, he's fine, he hasn't done drugs, he's on really good medication, and he's great now. And I still keep in contact. My husband and I went down there a couple weeks ago to see him sing in a bar, and he's great. Like an angel, you preach to me. Like an angel, you stood by me. He's great now. And I still keep in contact. My husband and I went down there a couple weeks ago to see him sing in a bar, and he's great. I was the average Joe. I was married with a couple kids, had a good job, a really good job, worked for my uncle, and uh, just playing my music. And everything kind of fell apart. I lost my job, got divorced, lost my family. Within that same year, I lost my father. And kind of just a, a combination of all those. I just had a mental meltdown. It was pretty hard on me. I'm 
got to see what's on the other side. You I took him in probably over three years ago, and I even had an officer ask me, why did you take him in when you could give someone else a bed? I said, because we're going to find him dead somewhere. He was like skin and bones. He was homeless. Um, after about two months, I thought, oh, I don't know if I can do this, because it was a very hard case. And uh, his mom called me, and she's like crying, Kathy, please don't give up on him. What am I supposed to do if she broke my heart? Like an angel. I was I was ready to die. I didn't care. I didn't care if I died. I wanted to die. You know? And everybody around me was just waiting. They were waiting for me to die. And uh, I mean I hit the floor in my mom's apartment. When I woke up I was in a hospital. My uncle told me about my mom calling 911 holding me in her lap. It's a 37-year-old man doing this to his mother. That's when I really, I lost it. Can't you hear me knocking? Knocking at your bedroom door. Can't you hear me pleading? I can't take this no more. Oh, Lord, please decide. Decide if I'm alive. And choose the path to take. My soul, it will wait. Is there a moment? Like I said, that moment came when I was, I ran out of, like I said, friends going house to house. And I slept at the beach. My duffel bag was my pillow. And I looked at my arms. I used the bathroom down at the beach, you know those bathrooms that they have, like the public washrooms, and I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, holy shit, you know? That was the moment right there where I actually took that first step and say, can you please give me a job? I'll do anything. Can't you hear me, Oh, I have a newborn baby. She's a year old now. I stay home with her every day. I raise her. Uh, I teach her. She smiles a lot. Not a, not a day goes by where I just don't, you know, just sit back and smile. You got your baby and your woman and your family's got your back. Take it easy. Just relax. Don't you dare look back. Mm, just relax. Homelessness is, would be like the bottom of being in poverty. The very bottom. If, if we had tears of how things should be, homelessness would be the bottom, the end result of poverty. When I wanted to get out of a situation, I didn't think I'd be homeless. I thought, you know, yeah, I'd, I'll get a place. I'll, be set, you know, I won't have to go through the whole shabam of everything, and <laughs> it wasn't like that. It's a lot more obstacles and stuff they have to go through to get where you want to be. You know, some of our kids are extremely resilient. They have gone through some pretty horrendous circumstances, and um, they're fighting to survive. It's the most heart-wrenching feeling in the world. It's like nobody wants you. You feel so alone and you feel so sad. And when you want to reach out, nobody believes you. They just think you're a really bad kid. They don't want to give you the time of day. And it just kind of feels like you're stuck in a hole because no one wants to help you. Like, you don't know if you should be happy or sad, uh, angered, trying to figure out why you're out there, confused, thinking if you're being judged every day because you're out on the streets, trying to figure out where you're, you know, like, Gonna sleep, eat, take a shower, change your clothes. There are there are people that stay at somebody's house like I did, but that's not their home. Like I would really wait till the person fell asleep and then snuggle up in a corner. I'd be up and gone by the time he noticed. That is homelessness. 
That's not home, right? Nobody's making me a meal. There was, I don't have my pillow. This isn't an issue that can be swept under the rug. The hidden homeless need your voice and they need your support. But we first have to recognize that the issue is here. And then we can start to support the needs of those around us. Something can be done. What will you do? Home is a place where everyone, where everyone loves you, where you feel comfortable and you just, you want to be there. Somewhere where you just, there's so much compassion and comfort and support. Somewhere where you belong. You know, I don't, sometimes I don't even think I know anymore, but I mean, familiar walls, familiar pictures hanging on the walls. Home to me would be a place where people would actually love you and care about you. Anywhere that I'm surrounded by people who love me and support me. It's more than just a, uh, a roof over your head, although that's part of it. A place you look forward to going to at the end of a long day or even returning to after a nice vacation. It's more than just food on the table, but that's part of it. Where your family is, where your friends are. Uh, I always heard the saying, home is where the heart is. You always have a chance of getting your favorite meal. We're loving. And, and caring people live, that care about each other, that respect each other. A place where you feel loved and supported, a place where you can reciprocate that as well. There's, I mean, it's, it's great to be loved and nurtured, um, but it's equally gratifying to be able to reciprocate that to someone. I mean, your home should be somewhere that you love and somewhere that you feel nurtured and, and cared for and loved. Somewhere to go every night, um, somewhere safe, home is a safe place. Safe. 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 A place you do feel safe. Home to me is family, you know, protecting each other and keeping each other good. It's more about people. It's more about love. It's more about being surrounded by things that I want in my life. It's a place where you know you can be yourself and you can let your guard down and do exactly what your heart and your soul wants you to do. So I really I don't feel I have a home and I don't know what a home is. I really didn't have a family to tell anybody about. I wish they were there for me. But uh, that's all I can tell you guys. Don't be homeless. Home is a place where you're comfortable and where you can be who you are. I think that's the best definition I can give.